Okay, so welcome to our video for today. So, this time we are going to discuss now the horizontal shear stress. So, for our learning objectives for this particular topic, at the end of this chapter, you will be able to Number one, describe the shear flow phenomena on flexural members. Number two, derive the horizontal shear stress in flexural members. And then explain the significance of shear flow in terms of built-up shifts and shear center. And then we, we need to apply efficiently the formula for horizontal shear stress right after we have derived the formula so the question is what is shear flow all about so as we can see here any beam subjected to a gravity load we have the shear diagram and a moment diagram wherein the values are observed to be varying at every point of the section of the beam so in here this is a sim simply supported uh, beam wherein we can uh, get the reactions WL over 2 and then uh, the maximum moment. So again, let me reiterate that the values are changing in every point of this beam, especially the moment. So if we have to consider here a uh, beam section of H and T a thin section say this is a thin section and then this te thin section are subdivided into layers just like uh, playing cards or uh, paper okay so there are layers of this uh, beam section so if we have a beam layers there will be a phenomena aside from the friction of course there will be a shear phenomena wherein these layers will touch it, each other and will cause a shear force in between okay so of course in the neutral axis there will be a transition of your loading when your loading will be bended up okay or your loading will be bended down so it, so it depends on the orientation of the uh, moment so if we have pos positive okay say so we have here positive uh, orientation your fiber will be like this however if you have so many layers here there will be a slip in between those layers so if this will be our neutral axis remember that the neutral axis is the transition between the compression and the tensile zone so in between that there will be a shear phenomena aside from each layer of this uh, elements beam elements so again there will be a slip action or the tendency for this to slide so our concern is the amount of force per layer because we need to ensure the bonding between the layers in order to uh, have a safe and sound design so what amount of bond between these layers so this is also true in built up uh, sections okay? when we say built up sections those are uh, for example we have a uh, plank and another plank that is glued into it Perhaps this, this is a homogeneous material or it might be that uh, these two are of different material. 
So we need, we really need to uh, compute for the shear flow of these layers, especially when it is subjected to a large moments. Okay. So between and among this one, it should resist the shear. So by and by, you will see how shall we relate to the dimensions of these uh, layers in terms of shear flow. So after we derive, we can un fully understand what should be adjusted if ever, if ever your uh, calculations discover some failures. Okay. So next. If we need to consider a certain cut or a cut out slice of a beam, let us zoom that out and then uh, this is like a book that is uh, being uh, stripped into a segment. Okay. So we will just get a partial of the total length and denote that by dx and just this, this just the same your overall height will be denoted by h here okay so the purpose is to isolate the segment so here is the segment and then get a piece of it and then analyze so what will be our forces there So first, if we are going to isolate that uh, free body diagram of this, that certain strip, okay, we can see here that the strip out of the length is dx, okay. So your cross section means to be the thickness or the b here denoted by b, and any distance from the neutral axis is uh, denoted by y. Okay. So, there will be an increment on each point in terms of the shear values and the moment values. What I mean is, uh, you know, that uh, from the very beginning that we do not have, or rarely we do not have a uh, constant values for the shear and the uh, moment so in every point the value is changing so that's it so it may be incremental or detrimental so in this case we are going to denote one side of the cut to have the initial value of the shear and then proceeding to the other side of the cut there will be an additional increment of the shear equivalent to differential v here okay so similarly, your moment here, the initial moment, will, will be delegated by M here, okay? And then on the other side, there will be an additional moment, say, this is M plus the increment, that is TM. So therefore, for the left side, we can denote that by... Uh, See, this is the sigma prime, and the other side will be sigma double prime. And then we write the flexural stress formula, or the flexure formula. We will be having sigma prime is equal to my all over i. And then for the right side, we'll just have to add an incremental moment from the original one. Okay. So next, by that, we can see here that uh, getting a strip of your beam 
course, there will be a larger value for your sigma prime. Okay? Of course, a larger value for sigma double prime because, again, uh, your force here is a combination of uh, the incremental dv and uh, there will be an additional dm to the right side. In short, uh, sigma double prime is uh, larger than sigma prime. So this is the stress wherein the stress at the right side will be larger value of uh, than the left portion. So by this we can uh, compute for value of FR and FL. So normally your stress will be in the triangular shape since we have an increasing value from the neutral axis outwards the beam. Okay, so say this is the neutral axis. Your shear stress resistance would tend to increase as we go farther than the neutral axis. So, in the green portion here, you can see that the the triangular shape is uh, smaller than that of FR. So to obtain the balance between FL and FR, because FL is less than, and there should be a balancing force in order to obtain equilibrium. That is why DF here is placed Okay, as an additional rightward, rightward force to obtain equilibrium. Okay, so F, D, F is added on that particular layer. So next, so we further consider this uh, layer. Again, this is DX. And uh, consider here a certain portion. So if this shaded portion is considered, say this is the shaded portion here, then your pressure will be a trapezoidal in form. Likewise, on the right side, there will be a trapezoidal force or pressure there thereby there will be FL here and FR on the right side so by that we can already write our equilibrium equation in order to further derive our formula so here we, we say that uh, Summation forces x is equal to 0. So we have rightwards fl plus rightwards df minus fr is equal to 0. Now we put in place the flexure formula here. Okay. As the sigma formula, I should say. Sigma formula or the simple stress formula is equal to force all over the area. So therefore, the force will just be equal to the stress times the area. Okay? So doing that, our area here is a differential one because we, we have just considered the strip of it Therefore, denoting the area by dA, we need to integrate that one. So, substituting for the FL, FL is on the left side and it is uh, denoted by sigma prime. So, sigma prime times derivative of the area. And then we'll just add this right one for here, dF. 
and then we let we list the leftward force this time we have stress of sigma double prime dA that is equal to zero so we put in place the flexure formula we're in that is simply equal to my all over i so sigma prime is uh, expressed on this so notice that uh, we have a single moment here so the original uh, couple here is m all right and then the uh, on the double prime on the right side there will be an additional moment or we'll just have to add here dm okay so by distributive property we can now see that uh, my over i will have a pair of a negative my over i on this uh, portion so therefore will just be cancelled okay so what will be left is df okay so we'll, we maintain df and then what is left here we transpose it to the right side and uh, the, the the variables are dm all over i integral of y da so we we need to bring this out because this is not a changing value i mean uh, this is constant on your beam section so what is changing here is uh, your y or the distance from the neutral axis all, uh, all over the uh, differential area so if we divide both sides by dx why do we need to divide it by dx because a while ago uh, by the way this force shall be distrib distributed on every all over the length okay all over the length so what what is the length considered here actually from the length we'll just uh, uh, cut out a strip of the length which is dx a while ago okay so that is why we need to divide both sides by dx so to distribute your force on that uh, strip of length so df all over dx is equal to dm all over dx dxi integral of y dE. so notice that df over dx is uh, our shear flow okay this is actually the shear flow wherein the force will be just distributed to the strip of the length and then uh, recall that the derivation of the moment or the first derivative of the moment diagram is actually the shear diagram so this is with respect to your length okay so the derivative of moment with respect to the uh, length will be the shear okay so that is why we indicate that by v and then integral of yd is a familiar uh, expression especially in your integral calculus so this is the first moment of area and normally it is uh, denoted by capital letter q okay and then finally by that we can now say that our formula is vq all over i or the shear flow will just be equal to the shear force times q all over i okay where in q is equal to tau b why tau b because if we investigate the unit here your shear will be in terms of newton okay and your q will be in terms of 
uh, moment of area that is cubic cubic meter and then your i will be meter is to 4 so therefore this is cancelled so it will uh, yield to this unit newton per meter or in your english units that is pounds per foot or in your inches it will be pounds per inches so how shall we relate it to your tau so tau here is actually newton per square meter or this is actually pascal or megapascal or kilopascal so normally it is megapascal so in this case we'll just have to get the root unit that is uh, pascal newton per square meter so how shall we translate this into newton per meter of course we need to multiply it by a dimension and that dimension is the width so we multiply it by a meter so we'll come up with newton per meter okay so that is why from tau or the stress we just multiply it by the width okay because the width here is a uh, uh, taken as constant on your beam cross section and the layer is uh, anyway your layer is changing especially if you use the flexure formula wherein y distance is changing from the neutral axis unlike b b here is constant so the multiplier here is b and then uh, we equate it the, to the original formula vq over i so finally your shear horizontal shear stress is equal to vq all over id so this will be used in our analysis of the shear flow as well as the shear stress that will be de developed between and among the layers of your beam especially in build up sections so for you to fully understand this, may I uh, uh, refer to you to a video clip regarding the behavior of the shear flow. Okay, so stand by for that video.